Good day, Great Uh Welcome to lesson number 59. Now, in this lesson, we are introducing microeconomics. Now, we have four main topics in our syllabus. We have macroeconomics, microeconomics, economic pursuits, and contemporary socioeconomic issues. So, in these four, we do macroeconomics in term one, and then we do microeconomics in term two, and then the other two, we do them in term three. After that, we write our prelim exams. So microeconomics uh, is in your paper two in the media, uh, paper two in the prelim, and paper two in the final exams. So let's get started. So we start this topic, microeconomics. It has three main topics. Uh, we have perfect markets or dynamics of perfect markets dynamics of imperfect markets, and then we have market failure. So we're starting with dynamics of perfect markets. So unit one. Now, since we are going to be doing markets, we have to first tell you uh, that we have four main types of market structures. So when you do dynamics of perfect markets, we are only doing one market structure, which is perfect market, or a perfectly competitive market. When we go into the next topic, it's dynamics of imperfect markets. Then we are going to use the same criteria here, like the classification in which market structures can be uh, compared. Uh, we are going to do oligopoly, monopoly, and monopolistic. So all in all, we have four. Perfect, monopoly, oligopoly, and monopolistic. So how do we compare the three, the, the four? Uh, we use number one, the nature of product, uh, the number of firms. Uh, when, we use, when we're looking at the number of firms, we are saying, how many firms are in a market structure? So in other cases, you'll see that there's only one. In other cases, you'll see that there are only a few. And in some cases, there are many. Okay. So for now, I don't tell you. We'll see when we are doing all these market structures individually, individually to see uh, which one is which. So number of firms is the first thing. Uh, after that, we look at the nature of product. Uh, so with the nature of product, a product can either be homogeneous, that means it's identical, or we can say standardized. Okay, look at maize. Maize is a good example. Maize, if it's not white, it's yellow. And you, you can't really tell the difference between maize from Zimbabwe, maize from Malawi. Maize is just white. Okay. Now, from there, we have heterogeneous products. Uh, the other uh, word is differentiated products. So some products are, the, okay, I can say it's the same, but differentiated. Same in the sense that they are both cold drinks, but those cold drinks are different. If you take a sip from Coke, you can tell this is Coke. If you take a sip from another cold drink, from another manufacturer, it doesn't taste like Coke. Uh, chicken, you take a bite, you can tell this is from KFC. Take a bite, you can say this is from Nando's. So that difference is what we call heterogeneous, differentiated products. So firms in this market structure, they try to make their products as different as possible. So that, um, but, but the, the thing is, it's a burger. But then McFist and uh, big steer burger from steers. It's they are both they are two different products. Then the last one is unique. A product can be unique. Now this is uh, mainly in an uh, a monopoly where you are the only firm producing a unique product that doesn't have any close substitute. The next uh, classification is control over price. Now. There are times when a business can set the price of whatever it is that they're selling. And then there are times when a business has no control. So we'll see as we proceed, like which market structure has control over price. So in other words, we can say in some cases, firms are price makers. In some cases, firms are price takers. Okay. The next one is barriers to entry. On this one, we are saying, how difficult is it for a firm to enter into a market structure? Okay, now you see that some market structures, uh, entry is free. For instance, 
if you want to be in a maize industry, um, when can you start? The, the answer is anytime. Like you don't really have to consult anyone that look, I'm thinking of um, producing maize in my farm. Uh, whatever it is that you want to plant, as long as it's a legal product, uh, you can plant it. So entering that market structure, we can say it's free. Now, in some cases, let's say you want to provide electricity in South Africa. You want to manufacture and provide it. Uh, the problem there is you cannot because entry will be blocked. In some cases, you'll see also that entry is not really blocked, but uh, it's difficult. And in that case, you'll see that um, they, they, you can, there are very, very few firms that participate in that market structure. Okay, so I don't tell you the name now, you'll see in later videos uh, that kind of market structure. For now, we just say this is how we classify these markets. The next one is collusion. And collusion is simply uh, the way uh, when firms can sit down and discuss ways in which they can minimize competition amongst themselves. Now, you will see that there are times when a firm cannot really... Um, firms cannot collude and mostly it can be because there are too many to collude and it's only possible for firms to collude when there are only a few in an industry okay but here in South Africa collusion is illegal and it has penalties so if businesses collude uh, you'll see in the last unit of uh, this topic we are going to do um, the topic of, um, what do you call it, the competition policy in South Africa. In that topic, you are going to see that um, some, uh, the, the, there are bodies that government uh, enacted to watch what's going on on the market. When they see any form of collusive behavior, they investigate. And if firms uh, are found wanting, they can face a heavy fine. And so in that case, you will see that they might lose their license, they might uh, 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 pay millions of rents, and no firm wants to do that. And, and if it's a publicly traded company, and uh, there's news that the business was colluding, the share price will obviously drop. Okay, the next one is availability of information. Now, in this one, certain market structures, information is complete. In certain market structures, information is incomplete, right? Then the next one is long run, profit or loss. Uh, in the long run, uh, a business could be able to make economic profit. In, a, in the long run, a business might not be able to make economic profit. So uh, maybe Another market structure, you'll see that a business can only make normal profit in the long run. And in another market structure, you'll see that maybe a business can make economic profit. So there are only two businesses, that, two market structures that can make um, economic profit in the long run and two market structures when businesses cannot. Okay. Then the next one is output, but I'm going to skip output. But output can either be high or low. But I'm skipping output because they removed it from our examinations guidelines. So it's not going to be tested in the exam. The next one is the demand curve. So we have four possibilities. Okay. Uh, possibility number one, demand curve can be horizontal. Possibility number two, demand curve can be kinked. Number four, downward sloping and elastic. Number, oh, that's three. Number four, downward sloping and inelastic. Okay, so you'll see which is which as we proceed. Okay, then the next one is decision making. Uh, you'll see that in some cases, decision making by one firm may not affect other firms. Okay, like that means um, if farmer A decides not to produce anything this year, that is not going to affect the industry okay that is not going to influence the industry because farmer a is just a drop in an ocean and uh, his decisions 
do not affect but you'll see that if uh, there are only four firms in an industry and uh, firm A decides on increasing the price or something like that or introducing a new technology you'll see that that is going to affect the other three they'll have to find ways okay um, of, of you know uh, competing because in such market structures there's something that we call a non-price competition they they don't only compete on prices there are so many ways in which they can compete right the next one is uh, productive efficiency so here we are trying to say can a business um, achieve productive efficiency or can a business not so you'll see that certain market structures businesses can uh, achieve productive efficiency and in some cases they cannot and um, uh, that means can a business produce at the lowest price possible then the last one uh, has to is allocative efficiency again just like productive um, we are saying can a business uh, be productively efficient or uh, allocatively efficient or not okay so this concludes the lesson and uh, I have uh, two uh, uh, questions for you. Name and discuss at least four criteria that uh, determine the structure of a market structure uh, of a market and then is collusion possible in a perfectly competitive market motivate your answer. Now this question it's, uh, it's easy because you have the answers there but the reason I'm putting this is it's a possible uh, question in an exam that will require eight marks. So uh, in this case, I'm asking you to name for and explain But in an exam, you won't be asked for 16 marks uh, They'll give you one or two compared to any two. So Yes, this activity is important for that reason. All right. Um, this concludes our lesson and um, I'll see you again in the next lesson, which is lesson number 60. Thank you so much